All right, so it's the Aya Show. Thank you so much for joining us on the You're Aya welcome. Show today. And it's our opener, so thank you so much for, wow. you know, this first. is the first one we're having Great. today. Great, I'll be thank there at the beginning. Thank you for opening it for us. Uh, so if you introduce yourself to us, who is Andrew French? Um, Andrew, who is Andrew French? Uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a working actor, I'm not like Denzel Washington, I wish. Captain, what's been your most challenging role so far? Assassination games with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Okay. Have you ever thought of giving up? Acting. And you know, people say, oh, you know, pressure, pressure, but pressure makes diamonds. You know, so yeah. And I think it's the thing about boundaries, because mm. you knew that you had boundaries. So you were so scared that mom's going to make sure that I get it today. Hello, good afternoon. We're here with um, someone who is quite interesting, someone a lot of people know. Um, he's been in acting for over a decade. He's absolutely fantastic. He's offered us an interview, so we're glad we're here and we're all smiles. As you can see, my smile is extra, really special today. All right, it's the Aya Show. Thanks for tuning in. And um, we have here with us Andrew Frank, wow. you know. This first. is the first one we're having today. Great, great. I'll be there at the beginning. Thanks for opening it for us. Um, so if you introduce yourself to us, who is Andrew French? Um, Andrew, who is Andrew French? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm an actor. Um, okay. Born in this country, uh, from um, have African and uh, Nigerian and um, Caribbean heritage. Um, lived in South of London, travelled the world. Uh, was going to become a journalist, then wanted to become a lawyer. <laughs> Actually, before that, I wanted to be a spy. Didn't everybody want to be a spy when I was a little kid? I wanted to be a little spy. And now I became an actor after I did my master's degree. Okay. In, gosh, you're right. Well over a decade now. Mm. I must be might be over 15 years now. So I do a lot of theatre, okay. TV and some film. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been really great. It's been a really great okay. experience All right. so far, so far. Why did you decide to go into acting then? I thought yeah. you wanted to become a journalist, you know, spy. I, I ask myself that question almost every day. I tell you what, I used to go to Sunday school. This okay. is a funny story. I used oh, to go to Sunday cool. school and I played Herod the King in, a, okay. in an nativity play and I was about seven. Hmm. And, my, and the, the lords have to come in and, and say, you know, we can't find the baby. I banged my fist on a, on a chair, much like this. I banged my fist on the on the on the throne, and smoke, sort of dust from the from the chair, came up, and the audience went <gasps> like that. I remember at seven or seven or eight, thinking, "Oh, oh acting, that's interesting. That I can do something, and they can react." Okay. And after that, I was hooked. Started doing lots of plays. Tried to stop because it's a difficult career. I really want. I really What'd wanted to. Yeah? Well, because I really wanted to not be an actor because. Uh, okay. Because when you're really successful, okay. everybody knows you and mm. likes you and there's money and first class Dang. travel and lovely cars and all the things Women. that go with it. All, all the things that go with it. But it doesn't love you back. So it's not okay. like it owes you anything. So the next week you might go up for something and mm. not get it. And mm. then you start all over again. And I think that up and down is quite hard for a lot of actors. Okay. It's quite hard for lots of people. but. Actors basically do a job interview, if they're lucky, once okay. a week. So, yeah. you know, when you think about when, you know, wanting to be an actor, you know, imagine doing a really tough job interview, mm -hmm. getting it, and then the next week saying, okay, can you do another one? And we do that all the time. And, and after a while, that can be quite wearing for your family, your friends, mm. and for you. I mean, so do you travel quite a lot for your roles, the roles that you play? Yeah, I mean, uh, Exorcist was 16, maybe okay. s Exorcist, was that right? Yeah, Exorcist, I think, was 16 meetings, on and off. Oh, gosh. I mean, it really was a lot. Is that right? Yeah. Um, wow. But then some, like uh, Assassination Games with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Okay. That was, I walked in and I could tell. Sometimes you can tell. Yeah. I'm sure, you know, if you walk into a room, sometimes you know, you know so people you like you or don't yeah. like you. You walk into a room and you just think, yeah, I've got this. I've got this. I, well, actually, you never, you never think, I've got this, but you do think, I'm very close. Because... Okay. You might go into a room for yeah. a meeting and mm. it might be perfect, but mm. they want somebody who's five foot ten. And there's nothing you can but do about not. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's not five foot ten. So, you know, very beautifully shaped and <laughs> five, but not five foot ten. Okay. So, okay, yes, yes, maybe we should move on. Five foot anyway, two. Five foot two. So, uh, yeah, sometimes you can go into a room and just go, okay. I feel very good about this. And you can't fake it. I know people, you can't fake okay. that sense of just being. But, but then, do you ever, have you ever had to say, no? I don't want to play that role. Um, you I don't play. I wouldn't. Role? I wouldn't play. I wouldn't play. Okay. The real rule would be whether it was well written. So I would play okay. a racist. I would play a murderer. Okay. I would play if it was really well written. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do something that I thought I'd be 
ashamed of later. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't do anything that was derogatory just for the sake of being derogatory. Okay. Um, there are certain corporations I would find it hard to do like an advert for. Adverts are just okay. selling, and that's fine. I love adverts, love commercials. Yeah. But if it was just, I'm trying to think, if it was something a little degrading, if I thought okay. it was degrading to me as a Ooh. black man, I probably wouldn't do it. Okay. So I have turned down jobs before, but you know, I'm a, I'm a working actor. I'm not like Denzel mm -hmm. Washington. I wish, but you know, <laughs> Den, you know, I have to pay the bills, and lots of you know, TV particularly pays quite well, so. It's hard to say no to it. I've got a really good family. My family are sort okay. of, they still sort of go, yeah, you weren't very good in that now. Served the rice and peas. Really no, they're, they're, it's really useful because, you, you know, there's lots of people who don't tell you when you're they bad. Just because, yeah. Yeah, because you're an actor. They just go, oh, I loved it, even if they didn't like it. Oh, I thought you were great. But, you know, my sister particularly, my mother will certainly just go, nah, should have done better there. So you've, you mentioned your family quite a lot. So are you quite, you've got a tight-knit family, I guess? Very, well, you know, we're quite, we're small. Um, okay. we're, where we're filming now, I live just around the corner and okay. my sister lives just over that way and my mother okay. lives uh, just <laughs> over that way. I mean, so and my cousin is just across <laughs> there. I mean, we're all pretty close and we see around. each other a lot, I would okay. say. I mean, I, yeah, we see each other a lot. And, uh, you know, I was brought up in a single parent family and, you know, okay. that, that does make things, I find. But where are your struggles? So growing up? Well, you oh, listen, you know, challenges? Southwest London, I mean, I had a great childhood. I had a really, really happy childhood. I'm not going to paint some picture of it being some sort of South Central LA, but there were people who did get on the wrong side of things. Okay. And that's just purely because they didn't have the moral leadership. I mean, I, I clearly remember seeing, having a black male teacher, and that was okay. so extraordinary to me okay. in primary school. So that was seven or eight. Mr. Daly, if you're out there, Mr. Daly, well played. <laughs> Very nice. Mr. <laughs> Daly was brilliant because I'd never seen a man who actually, he used to walk around with a book under his arm. I mean, I've never okay. seen, I mean, that sounds ridiculous. And that, that was like a role model for Real you, role model for me because I just thought, and he didn't, he spoke differently. He spoke, he spoke okay. like I speak now. I mean, I, wasn't, I didn't speak like this when I went to even university. I had to learn to speak okay. less Southwest <laughs> London. I, that, was, that was taught to me to speak, you know, slightly. In a certain way. Well, yeah. So is that making you into what you're not? Well, listen. I can, I can chat with my friends when I want to, when I want to. I mean, I think all, I think all of us to a lesser or greater degree okay. swap our voices depending on who we talk to, you know. There's lots yeah, of us right. who go, yeah, 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 hello. I mean, there's lots of us who change yeah, our voices. Kind of um, but I had to learn how to speak, you know, I do a lot of Shakespeare, for example. I do lots of classical plays. You know, I, South West okay. London accent wasn't going to always work. work. In um, so yes, Mr. Daly was really useful. But yeah, we had lots of... There were lots of my friends who got into some trouble. And okay. for me, strong mother, you mm -hmm. know, some really strong aunties, you know, lots of family friends who were called aunties. And literature, you know, I had a couple of really key teachers who just sort of went, no, actually, you might have a chance to do something else. Okay. And, you know, God, I don't know where I'd be without those teachers. Teaching mm -hmm. is the best job in the world, I'll just say that now, I'm on camera. Teaching is the best job in the world. And talking about that, I know that you do your classes. I do so do classes, classes, yeah. Okay. Is that the reason why you went into it, or why did you go into that? Uh, but okay, uh, I just think teaching's the most fulfilling thing I can think of me, me myself yeah. doing. I, it's just to get somebody who turns up and and finds it hard to look you in the eye. Yeah, and you get them to do that. And at the end of yeah, and at the end of okay. you know a period of time, they are they're full of confidence. You know, drama isn't just about being famous. It's not just about being on a You're soap. You're self-confidence as well. It's all about, you know, a lot of what we do day to day. Mm. I talk about interviews, but you know, just meeting people, even speaking on the phone, it's all about making connections, about communicating okay. yourself, about hearing them, making that person feel comfortable. Yeah. Drama can really help you with that. And also, drama helps you with trying to understand yourself. I mean, that's okay. really what it's all about. It's, they're all, all drama is just about stories. They're just okay. about why is that person doing that thing that they're doing at when the moment. When people play roles, do you find it hard to sort of snap up, just forget who that person is in the role and go back into your real self? Um, if you're playing a really, you know, serious part, mm. myself, I'll find it quite hard to come out of afterwards. And, you know, Have you heard that before? Um, yeah, I mean, it's certainly, a, certainly a couple of roles. We, we did a, a play by Chinwe Achebe, um, Things Fall Apart. Mm -hmm. Breathtakingly classic play. I read about that and I thought, it was in Things Fall Apart! I must have been so young and it was such a great production, if I say so myself. It's a really <laughs> great production. 
But I mean, I used to cry on stage every night, not not purposefully, just to become a moment when the, just the oh. sadness of what heartbreaking. And I would be a little down until mm. I got home. I mean, I would be quite miserable until I got home because uh, just the weight of the oppression of people okay. was just difficult. And how did you get get back to you to yourself? After PlayStation. Probably. <laughs> yeah, that our PlayStation always fixes all ills. They should pay you for that. Yeah, no, yeah. I, was, yeah I should. I should. I said that. Should I? <laughs> there should be a little strap line underneath. Now, just going. This is okay. sponsored by Sony PlayStation. <laughs> ah, yes, sponsored. Oh, yeah, so so that, you do a lot of that, then. That's how you. Um, snap no, up. no. I read. Uh, okay. Hang out with people who've got nothing to do with my business. <laughs> um, this sounds really. I really like gardening. I'm, I'm, I'm a oh, big okay. fan. I know, I know it sounds strange. I've just got into gardening and i tell you why. Okay, why? I tell you gardening because I say to you, Aya, listen, I'm going to give you £50,000 okay. for two months' work. Um, okay. But I'm going to let you know if, I'm going to, if you're going to get £50,000 tomorrow or the day after, or maybe the day after that. Right. Okay, so you go home now. So if that happens to you, when you walk out the door, all you're thinking about is £50,000. £50,000. Um. I can pay off my mortgage. I can buy my mum this. I could do that. Yeah. And it's hard to carry on with your life. What I do, when you've got something that you're waiting for and you look yeah. at that phone and it's not ringing and it's <laughs> not ringing, I go into my garden, work in my garden, you know, with, before you know it, it puts your hand, you, 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 work, you focus on some sort of creation and before you know it, four hours have gone. No, that's you, just you. you. Yeah, yeah, I'm just incredibly spiritual, righteous brother. So are you <laughs> then? Do you do the church thing? What, are you um, religious? I, listen, I will... I, I am religious. Okay. I don't go to church as much as I used to. I mean, I used to be before I went to university. I was incredibly. I mean, I went. I went to a. I, mum was Church of England. Then we went okay. to Methodist, and then I really was into a Baptist church. My okay. minister changed, and then I went to university. I don't go nearly as much as I should, really. But um, I th well, I I I, I, too, I think more as I get older. Yeah. I'm thinking more about. Okay spirituality which isn't quite the same as being religious but i, I do really i hear a lot about that well i, I just, don't I, get it I, well, I, I, th I just think more people the thing about religion yeah. often is not always but sometimes can be that people it, it sets one type of belief against right. another and uh, the only the only belief system i really have is that uh, we still love each other just a little bit more that, just that, true. You know, just do unto others as you would do to yourself, you know. Just, I just think that a little more of understanding of other people's points of view would be a really good step to make. So I'm just good trying point. to be. That's a good point. I'm just trying to be a, a little better today than I was yesterday. Okay. That's my spirituality now. Oh, okay. Right. Um. So, what university did you go? What did you just study? I went to Leicester University. I did yeah. English, history, and drama BA uh, combined studies, okay. focusing on Renaissance English, Renaissance history, and Renaissance okay. drama. And I did a master's degree in Stratford upon Avon, uh, the Shakespeare Institute, uh, okay. where I'm going back for a reunion soon. They've just they've just written to me actually to ask me to do a couple of uh, lectures, which will be great. Okay. Oh, and I did my master's degree, and that's I know it's it is strange because I thought I thought it was just about just getting the training and then no, you go into it. Most people don't do what I most people but, but most, no most people don't do what I did. And if I could do it again, I would have probably. Oh, I don't know. I can understand why actors start very young. I, okay. I personally think it's a mistake. I think you should get some life experience okay. first. How can you play, I don't know, uh, somebody who's heartbroken and wants to... If, wants you to, if you've, never, you've never really been in love, you know, you've never really experienced but loss. But I guess it's, people act, though. It's of course, of course. No, listen, of course. But oh, yeah, I get your point. No, 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 I agree with you. You know, I've, n I've never murdered anybody. I would, you know, <laughs> you I've, played, I've played murderers. So, you know, yeah. where did I get... But I've, I do think as you get older, you get more of a depth of feeling and I get you get more of a sense mm. of what you're like and what other people are like and I just think I teach a lot of 16 17 18 year olds okay and you say to them you know scream and shout at that person and tell them that you hate them they just find that they find it hard to express it and that's partly because you know 16 17 and 18 you're still yeah. trying to work yourself out I mean yeah. I knew not I knew nothing about anything but I was 16 so I just wanted did, to enjoy yourself I just wanted to enjoy myself yeah I did so with your family, when you said you're going into acting, how did they respond? What was the response? What well, I mean, this, well, my mum is huge. I mean, I think this is a, in a lot of black culture. My mum was hugely mm. into uh, uh, education. She thought education was the silver bullet, and she's right. Education is the is the key. If you want to uh, listen now, you want to make yourself better. I mean, it, 
I, I mean, I wish I studied very hard, and mm. I wish I'd studied harder. I mean, mm. it's just, it's the trick, it's the key, it's the it's the way you get out. And, you know, I don't mean about getting out of some ghetto, but I just mean if you yeah. want to improve your life, the quickest, so best way to do it is just to be really well educated. Mm. I mean, mm. university was one of the best times of my life. Yeah. I mean, and I, wor I worked hard, and there were times when I didn't have very much money, and I still would say it was one of the best so times good. of my life. See? And I learnt... I learned That's how the to think. success in your story at university, having to go then face all that. Yeah. And still coming out. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I, yeah, there are, there are things I learned at university that mm. I'm still thinking about. And, you know, that, but I, you know, I still Such use now. Well, just how to work in a group environment. Okay. You know, I first learned that. The first time I ever shared with somebody in a house who wasn't family was at university. And just, you know, going to the yeah. fridge reaching in and the orange juice is finished but somebody's <laughs> so left like, that much there you know how do i deal with that person who's my friend who now has got me just a little bit no. upset <laughs> how do i deal with that you know, i learned those skills at university at you university. know and i just think you know it breaks my heart when i hear about um, particularly black kids i'm going to be honest particularly mm, who are not who are just who are dropping out of school at 16. what do you think that is in the society today i in think i think okay there's Two, two sides. First, I think uh, some of the teaching is not good enough. Oh, yeah, I just, so. well, I think I think sometimes I think sometimes if a if a student is bored, mm -hmm. don't make them bored. I teach. You get bored in lectures I, anyway. I, absolutely, but <laughs> I, I teach, and I can always see my students who are bored. I can always ah. see my students who are bored, and I always go right. What do I have to do? And sometimes I'll say, okay, everybody stop get up and let's run around for 15 minutes or okay. go over there and stand over there or tell me a joke or do something just to yeah but it's about so recognizing yeah so they are, they are engaged it's really easy it's really easy to mm. to look in a class and go you're smart you're smart you're smart you're not so smart you're not so smart you're not so sure. smart and you guys are sort of in the middle and just to forget about those guys and funny okay. enough often those guys who don't look interested who you think aren't very smart no. are black and so very quickly they get left behind. They mm. sense that and so they don't try and before you know it they're miles behind and they can't catch up. What do you think is the way around this? Um, I would say more black teachers. Mm. I would also say you've got to have the back, back up at home. I mean, you know. That's true. My mum, I laugh now, it used to drive me <laughs> crazy, but my mum would and open the door. At home, studying. When I was studying, she would knock and then open. I mean, there's no, no come in to, to make sure that I wasn't just or playing games or, you know, yeah, so I had to be on it. And, you know, I mean, but she just made sure. I mean, she would ask me every day, what did you learn today? Tell me what you learned today. Well, you get, come here, tell me what you learned today. And I would have to, when I was five and six, my mum used to work at night. So mm. when she'd come home uh, and we were making breakfast before I went to um, school, she would buy a paper, a broadsheet paper. Right. I would stand, I mean, clearly I remember this in the kitchen. <laughs> I'd stand up on a little chair. Right hold the paper out loud and read out loud as she was making breakfast. Now, one of the reasons was because mm. mum's reading isn't as good as she would have liked and she wanted okay. me to be really, really, really good. good. But what happened was you had this five, six, seven-year-old who was reading about politics. I didn't really understand what was going on, but I was but reading out read loud. Anyway. So by the time I got to eight, I was incredibly confident about reading. Wow. I'm confident now. You can put pretty much anything in front of me. And you would read and I'll it. And right? I'll just sight read it. I'll just look at it and start to read it so out it's loud. It's all about the reinforcement. How reinforcement at home. But also, you know, let's put our hands up. Some of those students have to step up. We can't mm. keep saying, oh, you know, teachers, teachers are, are racist. Oh, you know, it's really tough for me at home. Oh, you know, all my friends are doing this. At some point or another, you have to just go, I can't make that excuse when I'm 45 and still claiming the adult. That's the message we're trying to send across Do you know what I mean? show. At some point yeah. you have to say, if I want the things I want, I'm going to have to get them because no one's going to give them to us. No one, I mean... you got to fight for it. More like very that. few things in my life have been given to me. I literally have just had to go take and that. when you fight for things, you, you, you have this thing of, uh, actually, that's mine. Yeah, yeah, you achieve mine. something. Yeah, you get a real sense of achievement and accomplishment mm. as well. Uh, yeah, no, no more excuses. You know. So it's the family for you. It was your mum because you mentioned your mum quite she, a lot of times. Yeah, your yeah mom, she's your yeah, she's vital to me. I mean, she's just. But we know that in the society that we are today, that there's certain young people who have left home. Their parents don't really care about them anymore. Yeah. And what for us, what it's about is someone who doesn't have a parent as such. They have parents, but parents who don't really care about them. But what can we do? It's okay for us to sit down and say, "Oh yeah, we need more teachers." Well, you should have your parents behind you with everything you do but they don't so how can we as a society help them because those are kids that will go and say well no one cared about me well i but mean 
I, I listen, I think, I think you're, you're absolutely right. And I do think one of the things we should do as a society is stop being frightened of our youth. Okay. I mean, because I just, I just don't think, you know, most people open to people who are open to them. I'm not mm. saying you should start talking to strangers, but I just think we should start caring a little more. I, I often think you see a group of three youths mm. walking down the street and you immediately assume that they must they be criminals, they're doing something. You know, I've got a bunch of uh, young people at the bottom of my road who I speak to all the time. And for the first few weeks, I was sure and they must be doing something dodgy. <laughs> they just weren't. They just, just weren't. They work, on, they work on cars. That's all they do. You know, they're, they're really nice boys. So I think as a society, we can start listening to our youth a bit more. And uh, I also think we should start we should start helping. If you don't have any parents, okay. then you should start being, you know, you can become friends with the person who runs your corner shop. You become okay. friends with your milkman. Sure. And I just think, if we could just get a sense of social responsibility back. So, uh -huh. I... So I, it's giving something back. Yeah. I, did, I, I didn't want to fail um, when I was studying because I knew there were people who were you depending on me. And not just family, but the people who were like, come on, you know you can do this. Yeah. Come, on, yeah. come on. And, you know, people say, oh, you know, pressure, pressure. But pressure makes diamonds. You know, and so, you know, some, right. it's, it's pointless trying to deny pressure when you're 16, 17, because trust me, at 21, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming your way. <laughs> so you're so going to be getting ready for it. getting ready for it. So, uh, yeah, I would say some social responsibilities. You know, start making friends with people. Start having people who, you know, you rely on and can rely on you. So now growing up in an African community, we had aunties and uncles. People weren't really related yeah. to us anyway. Yeah, yeah, aunties. But they would say, I'm going to make sure I tell your mum. And you're crying so much, I can walk, him not to. I, this is Battle High Road here. <laughs> I couldn't walk down this street when I was a child. My, my, my secondary school is literally just around the corner. I remember walking home. I remember once missing Woodcraft. Ah. We used to have a Woodcraft. I, I'm, t I'm pretty terrible. Woodcraft and technical drawing were the two classes I really right. couldn't stand. And the first time, honest to God, the first time I ever said, I'm going to leave this class. Yeah. I was going to hang around at my friend's house and then go home and tell mum I did it. Yeah. I was walking down Battle High Road about... 20 past two, and an auntie drove past, stopped, oh, looked, baby. ran out the window, beat the horn, and just went. When I got sorry. home, I never forget. <laughs> when I got home, I was walking up my road. My mum was outside the, my house. I was outside the house, <laughs> waiting. Terrifying. And you just knew. Heart was pounding. So even now, remembering it, I'm still a bit scared. So yeah. And I think it's the thing about boundaries, because mm. you knew that you had boundaries. So you were so scared that mum's gonna make sure that I get it today. Well, this. There's no doubt in my mind. From my teaching experience, yeah. I'm quite strict. There's a phrase, there's a phrase in teaching about don't smile till December, which means don't be nice, don't be particularly friendly. You're not there to be friends with your your students. You're there to teach them. Okay. And I would make on the first, always in the first class. I'd say, mm. okay, we're going to make some rules now, and no one's going to be late. For example, no one's going to, you know, just a bunch of rules that we all agree on. They love every single class I've taught. I've taught tons of classes. Every single class I loves boundaries because boundaries makes them feel safe and makes them feel cared for and looked after because somebody has taken enough time to go, I'm watching you and if you go there, I'm going to say that's wrong. Way. It's really useful. We all think it's nice to just let them run free. Because a lot of young free. people don't want boundaries these days. I've got an 18 year old brother who feels, oh yeah, I'm 18 now. You don't have to tell me what to do. I don't have to go to bed at a certain time. He's doing his A-levels and he feels a bit like, you know what, I've got my life now. Well, but what can you say to them? Well, At eighteen, I couldn't face my parents. I don't mm. know if it's the society that we are now. They have so many true. choices, and I can do this. I don't want to do that. But while I was growing up, when I was eighteen, your mom told you what to do. Mm. You just went with it. Yeah, um, I would. Well, I think we're just going to have to get a little tougher. I mean, mm. you know, I, it, you. it is hard. It is hard when a, a child of yours or a student or. Whoever you know yeah. says you know you don't tell me what to do. I don't like. I hate you. I'm, I'm my own person now. Yeah, you might feel that now. Yeah. But what I'm doing for you now will yeah. help you in five years' time. So if you don't like me in the intervening five years, that's a price I'm going to have to pay. But when you're 23, you will look back and go, actually, you know what? You were right. Thanks for that. And I just think we have to stop being so soft. Really, and look, gosh, I mean, it makes me sound like I'm incredibly right wing. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly liberal, and I believe, you know, <laughs> I believe in the arts, and I believe in, you know, I don't believe in people by being incredibly strict. But I just think boundaries are important, okay. and I think, in my experience, that's down to parenting, okay. because uh, I've, you know, my mother is only about this tall, 
and I'm not sure I could answer back to her now. You know, yeah. it's just, it's just, it's just, you just have to get used to it. And none of my students, argue, you know, mm. argue back to me, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not fearsome or, or, or terrifying. I just say, this is the way it's going to be. I'll treat you with respect. You must treat me with respect. So in terms of the, the roles that you wouldn't take, and because you were speaking earlier about, you know, if you knew they was demeaning, then you wouldn't do it. Mm. Does your mum have any part to play in that? Does she say, I once, eh, you can't do that? I once played a part on stage where I had to um, roll a cigarette. That's all I had to, I had to roll a cigarette, <laughs> roll a cigarette and uh, eat a McDonald's very quickly, in front of the stage. And mum came to see it, and I heard her in the audience go, Andrew, don't do it. <laughs> so, I mean, it was a complete role. I mean, mum wouldn't tell me not to do a part. Okay. But there might be some parts where, I mean, she regularly watches TV and she'll go, oh, look at that terrible depiction of a black person there. How come that black person there is losing their job? How come that black person is? So, well, the only thing I would say, she would say, oh, what a stupid actor for playing that part. And I would say, <laughs> for a lot of actors, right. there isn't really much choice. You, you just okay. have to... You have to get the next job because you know TV. You might only do if you're lucky. You might do three television jobs in a year. Most actors, most jobbing actors. There's a there's a percentage of actors who are quite poor and hardly ever work. Yes, mm. and there's a very thin percentage that work all the time, and then there's a chunk in the middle. Why do you think that is? Why does I th- it I th- well, for me, it's because nobody knows anything. What that means is. Mm-hmm. You're a producer, you're a film producer or a TV producer, and you don't, know, you don't know really why your last film was a hit. You don't really know. You don't really know what the story was, but you do know that David Jason was in it. And you know that David Jason was in a hit last time right. and the time before. So probably your best bet to make sure that your next show's a hit is to get David Jason. If you get David Jason, that means he keeps on working, keeps on working, that's fine, David Jason's fine. Okay. But he gets paid an awful lot. Uh-huh. Now, are you going to take that that new play that you've got, a new script you've got, yeah. you've, and go, I'm going to give it to this new person who no one's ever heard of. That sometimes happens. And for me, all the best things that happen on TV, certainly, yeah. are nearly always done with people who you hardly ever heard of. You know, uh, The Office, Cracker, Wire. I can go okay. on and on. They're nearly yeah. always full of people who just go, who the hell are you? And then they're famous. <laughs> but very rarely do people take that chance. So okay. what happens is they get the same people over and over again. And there are some people at the bottom who are... Yeah. Uh, really shouldn't be in the business probably or just gotten lucky or have other things going on in their life and that's perfectly fine and then there's the rest of us who are just hoping that one day we'll get something like the wire oh, you are or, somewhere. well no, no I'm, I'm just i'm talking in general no no i've done i've done all right you know i mean you always have the ambition to do of course, yeah. better and better and better and better and as you get older you know you start wanting to take control of things more you know it's great to see people of color behind cameras and behind <laughs> lights today it's true because you know i think what happens you'll see most black actors mm. once they get into their 40s you'll see them start to write start to direct okay. start to produce because you want to be able to control the image um i'm so i exploring? mean for sh- absolutely i'm okay. not sure how possible it is how easy it is to do in this country because we just okay. don't have the money we don't have the black we don't have the black economic power yet it's coming okay. but you know you go to america and you, you see this clear there's though. a black no no there's lots of little... lots of black people who've got yeah. money here but uh we haven't got an i don't think we have enough money we're not as vocal in america okay. either so you know in america spike lee got famous because a black middle class went we like those films we want to see those films and we're going to give you money, money so we can see those it. films and so that allowed him to start to do the stuff so he do you think that's do. what's needed a bit more what's needed is a black vocal middle class yes with who are prepared to spend their money on black things that's You're watching critical i mean that, that's that's critical yeah there's a black millionaire out there who wants to fund my film i've got three script ideas you know just, just right to i and i'll we're gonna make him pay for um, that uh, <laughs> yes you know you need because we need to start saying I'm going to go to that black store. I mean, it sounds ridiculous. It makes yeah. it sound like a pl- pipe little. <laughs> no, yeah. but it, it is it's, true. It's true right? because, you know, you know um, there are lots of other cultures in this country yeah. that really support themselves. When they make it, they can support themselves. And oftentimes, we, and I swear we mean in particular Afro Caribbean, yeah. do not. And uh, that's a shame because those businesses really need our support to survive. Even if you think that business isn't as great as maybe the other one around the corner, just, just support it for a while because, you know, you keep it going, don't you? That'll make it get better and better and better. Someone else. So, yeah, that's what I would say. But acting, what has been your most challenging role so far? Paid acting? 
Okay. Uh, and the, okay, The Exorcist, the first okay. Exorcist was was tough because um, you just get so little film practice in this country. Okay. So all of a sudden I was playing a pretty major role in, you know, it was 65, 75 million, mm. I mean, you know, pretty big budget yeah. with actors who had acted in 50, 60, 70 films. And, you know, that's quite ah, tough. For you, was when a you, bit. When you stand there on the first day and you're talking to people who you just think they really know what they're doing and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so you're... You know, you're having to do, you're having to learn yeah. whilst doing it. Whilst doing it, you know, oh. you have to learn about marks and lights, and you know that was tough. And it was a long time. We were in Morocco for a long time, and you know, extraordinary experience. But it was quite hard. I had to speak in a different language at times. Mm. And uh, you have to learn that, or did you? Just yeah, no, yeah, uh, Turkana. Uh, they, you know, that's film for you. They spend the money, so they hired, okay. they they paid for a group. Of people from to, to, come, to come over and to teach us the language and to teach us dances. None of that stuff ever made the film, but it was all good for me as research. Okay. You know, just like you know. So I would often ask them. We would walk around, and you know, I went on hunting expeditions with them to see how they would have hunted in the eighteen okay. hundreds. So it was that was really really good interesting. Experience. What was the easiest one? The most fun that you had? Well, look, I mean, not to say that the other ones. No, 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 no. I mean, I guess there's lots of TV I've done that. Um, okay. It's relatively easy. Okay. Theatre is probably what I find the most comfortable. I would say probably a Shakespeare play is what I enjoy best because I just think it's fun. People that ethnic minorities, or yeah. actors, yeah. the roles that they get. Well, the well, roles okay. You think they well, listen. Um, more like Idris Idris Elba is a very good example of you know black British who has got the wire and you know yeah. it should be two hour shame really that he had to go to America. Okay. To really become something, something so then he could come back here. He had to go away to get big enough mm. for English people. He'd probably been in front of tons of times, going, "Oh, he's good. Let's get him in." <laughs> Where were you five years ago? Um, he's making a difference. Okay. You know, he's making a difference, and uh, you know, Chibi Ajia Ford. There's a whole bunch of actors yeah. who are just. But uh, so I would say this. I mean, I roles? well, yeah, I think there so are certain like types. There are certain types of roles. Well, just watch. If you watch TV, if you just switch on TV tonight, right. whenever you see a black person. On, in an advert or on, on TV, ask yourself what the context is. If it's not about crime yeah. or some sort of punishment or, or uh, sex or sport yeah. or fast food, I'd be very surprised if, if you take any of those oh. roles away, there won't be hardly any left. And I just think that's partly because, I mean, I hate to say, I hate to... Makes it sound like we've got a persecution complex. I, I don't think I don't think that. You know, you watch oh, East, sorry, you watch Eastenders, you watch Eastenders, and you watch yeah. Cory, and you know, there's, there, there are ethnic minorities on there, and they're mm. they're fine. But you know, if you're talking about the top dramas, yeah, there's not as many as there should be. One in ten people in this country, I think, now are of color. When they say, "I've got a great script for you, Andrew," I will be sexy or mm. dangerous. Right. I mean, all, I can't tell you how many scripts I get where they go. Um, uh, Peter Smith, 30s, a dangerous sexuality about him. But, you know, uh, Andrew, whatever, you know, dangerously, blah, blah. I mean, over and over and over it's again. It's got to be dangerous. <laughs> it's got to be dangerous. Because <laughs> I know you're in Hollywood. Was it last oh, year? yes, yes, I was in like Hollywood. Huge fan. Are you? Well, um, not so much anymore, but. Well, yeah. Um, what can I say about Hollywood? Listen, they were very lovely. It's filmed, okay. in, filmed in Liverpool. I was only in a, a little bit of it, but, you know. Okay. Well, I don't think what people don't realise about the set? Huh? How do you enjoy the people? Uh, the people, the people were lovely. The set was lovely. All the regulars were really nice. They are incredibly okay. young. I mean, oh, really? it is, I think people don't realise about a lot of our soaps is that yeah. when I was growing up, gosh, mm. I sound like an old man, but when I was growing up, <laughs> there was, I think EastEnders was on Tuesday okay. and Thursday right. and then an hour omnibus on, okay. on Sunday. Saturday. How many Sunday. On Sunday. How many, how many hours, how many days is it on now? Is it, Fridays, it, Monday to Friday. Is it Monday to Friday, Eastenders? Yeah. It can't it's be. Not. Is it? Monday to Friday? Come on, you know, don't try and pretend. I know you know. <laughs> not Wednesday, Wednesday out. So Wednesday four, out. So oh, four okay. days a week. Four so days that's, week. that's two hours of TV to okay. shoot every week. And what that means is they give you a script and it's about mm. that thick. And you pull out all the pages that have got that's your stuff in. That's just for a week. Yeah, that's just for a week. It's thick. That's thick. Thing. You read it, but you only have just enough time to learn it overnight. Right before you're shooting another scene. And so what that means is you shoot incredibly quickly. Wow. So that's why that is different from, I don't know, uh, 
I keep mentioning The Wire, but you know, West Wing, any of those American dramas which take mm. a long time to film and they can take it and go, let's try again. When Hollyoaks, yeah. you're shooting and they, they light it and they go, okay, checks, they do your makeup and stuff and shoot. And that mm. next girl is nearly always is you done. Okay, let's turn around and let's do the other scene. So if you're not ready, if you're not on it, you know, and if you're 18, 19 and shooting it for three years, you are working flat out. So, you know, when you see them all at the um, yeah. soap awards and you just go, oh, look at them, so lucky. Most soap it's actors work. really work for it because it's long hours, lots of learning. And, and they're quite young, though. Yeah, but they're, so, they're so young. And I just think to myself, you know, you're very lucky if you get to work in a soap in this mm -hmm. country because it pushes okay. your profile up. You know, the money is pretty wow. good. Yeah, I think so. Um, and, uh, See, big but, biters. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, or nearly always soaps, they have a fast turnover. So at some point or another, you're going to be out of that soap. Mm. Most people don't have Ken Barlow's. You know, most people have five years and they either are too tired or they're fed up or, mm -hmm. the, or that character's gone. But it's very difficult to do something else because, you know, soaps are so ingrained in our system that, you know, if, you, if you're in Hollywood for five years, in five years' time after that, people are going, when you're walking down the road, people are going to see you and go, hey, weren't you in Hollyoaks? What are you doing now? <laughs> yeah. so, well, I'm working. Really because of course you're not, because you're not yeah, on their TV yeah. every day. Anyway, so um, I liked Hollyoaks. Uh, I don't know if I could do it. No? It's, well, I just, I mean, look, I would love to be offered it, but I think they work really, really hard. You and mean casualty as well? Casualty, you? well, see, casualty is different, because casualty is an hour, and it's not on... So I think about 50 minutes so it's okay. on once a week and it's not on 52 weeks a year so there's okay. a little breaking time again that's so shot. that's a bit more relaxed isn't it? it's a little more I wouldn't say relaxed it's a little slower to shoot right casualty was great I'm, okay I'm a big fan of the hospital dramas I've just done yeah, a, yeah, I did I a whole well. I did a whole whole city a while ago and I had such a lovely cast really lo really lovely director and just okay. um you get a little time to try you know we sometimes say um you know, do one for yourself, or you'll do one in the can, okay. so like, you know, you'll shoot a scene like yeah. this now, and then the director will say, you can do another one, just to try oh, something okay. different. So, so yeah, yeah, so I might, I might suddenly, you know, yeah. be a bit more, you know, have a different attitude mm. to you, just because I think, well, maybe, my, maybe my character is really attracted to Aya, maybe my character can't stand oh, her. Okay. Have you ever thought of giving up? Acting. Every day. And I don't know an actor. Really? Act I, I don't Why know. Is that? I, because you want a life. Now listen, oh. even the actors who really make it, I would say nearly all of them probably think, I've got to stop doing this. Because okay. it is stressful, but it's also strange. I mean, that okay. Up and down I was talking about yeah. before. I think that that's not particularly good for a lot of people. Okay. Uh, you know, and you want to have a family. You know, most filming is away from home. Okay long hours, strange yeah. hours, then all of a sudden you're at home again. It's hard to plan a life. Okay. Um, you know, I want to teach. So if you're not, if you're not really? Yeah, I would love fun. to teach. I'd lo yeah, I'd really like to teach, you know, boys like me and, you know, you know people Just of colour. So this is your chance, see? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, teaching, I think, I'd, I'd quite like to do. I, but I'd miss the acting. Yeah. Okay. But if you, if you went on acting, what else would you do? Um, well, if I wasn't acting or, if, yeah. or when I'm not acting now. Well, if you're not an actor, or if you, I, well, if you I, an actor, I would, I would, I would teach. I would definitely write. Okay. Um, you know, I've, I've got an idea about uh, the reason why I was going on before about Elizabeth the First is because I'm, I'm thinking of writing about um, okay. some black people who come over from um, the north coast of Africa and land in London and what happens to them. Okay. Um, so uh, I definitely write things. Okay. And I want to, yeah, I want to work with young people, so I would do that. Maybe produce. I'd love to direct. Uh, or maybe I'd start my own. Well, because I quite like, I quite like, um, I'm quite handy with my hands. So, I mean, okay. not good at woodwork, but I'm yeah. quite good at like DIY and stuff. So I've, okay. I've often thought about starting up my own business. That's good. Maybe. What are your thoughts about the London riots? Were you in town at that time? Did I was, know? I was absolutely in town at that time. <laughs> okay, what did I think? Okay. First, I thought, I'm old enough, you're not. Okay. I don't know if anybody in this room is. So, uh, I don't think, but I was old enough to remember the Brixton riots. Okay. And, you know, Birmingham riots. I mean, there have been riots in my childhood that were really scary. This seemed to be just, uh, I mean, I'm sure it was terribly, terribly frightening for lots of people, mm. but um, it seemed to be more about 
just causing a disturbance and then stealing stuff. Whereas a lot of the riots that happened when I was younger were about a social concern about. So I would say this: um, there's a direct connection between um, cutting uh, youth worker places, okay. um, job, um, you know, places where young people can go and be looked after and entertained and kept interested and involved. You take away those things, at some point or another, stuff's going to crack. Secondly, I think uh, people are a bit tired of this percentage of people having this much wealth and these many people okay. having that much wealth. Okay. And I think when I was growing up, gosh, I sound so when I was growing up, I wanted nice shoes. I did. I would look at Adidas and go, I want that. Got to get those, got to get those. And I would have to save up for it. But I really, but now I think. People expect, we all expect we should we drive should nice cars it. and have all the things not that we see on TV. It, not, not working for it, we should all. So we need to change our values. Okay. So I would say start putting money back into youth work. I mean, really seriously. And we have to start adjusting our values. You can't have everything. You and know, some people have said it's about parenting. Well, <laughs> gosh, parents are getting a bit of a, a, a battering in this interview. But um, <laughs> I think it's probably quite hard to be a parent now. Let's okay. be honest. You know, when I when I was younger and I said to mum I'd like to go to McDonald's, right. I keep pointing over in the camera, but there was a McDonald's <laughs> just over there, which was the McDonald's that I first went to. It's just there, it's just there. There's McDonald's that I just went, to. that was one of the earliest McDonald's that opened that I knew. Okay. And one of my birthday presents when I was 11 was going to McDonald's. That was the present, nothing else. Me and a few friends went to McDonald's. That was a great day. Now, if I had a 70 year old and they said, dad, I want a McDonald's, I would feel, oh, I suppose, I suppose, I guess the elder yeah. friends are having McDonald's, I suppose I can give them McDonald's as a treat. For me, it was a birthday present, and I think... So that's different. Yeah, I think as a, as a parent, you have to, I keep saying this, you have to be prepared to say, no, our values are this. I don't care what your friends do, this is the value you're going to, you know, have. Mm. That means you don't get everything. I don't have the money right now, or more importantly, you haven't you worked for things. it right now. So if you go and do this and this and that, I'll give you those trainers, but mm. not beforehand. Good yeah, I just think we look, and that's the harder road. I've got nieces and nephews, and uh, you know, when they say, "Oh, I don't like you," you're horrible to me. It's very hard to take. Yeah, but, but unless you know that you're doing it for a good reason, doing it for a good reason. I think what, that, that's what parents are, find hard to to do with their kids. So it's not wanting to upset the kid where they go and get it anyway through whatever means. Mm. But if they're going to go and do it, then. Yeah, well, I think, uh, yeah, well, you know, you have to, I, I mean, it's been proved that most children um, get their early values yeah. from how parents are treated. So I was reading this really good article about how to be a father when a couple of days ago, it was saying, you know, never disrespect the mother. And I just thought it was really interesting because if you, if, you, if your child is growing up and seeing you disrespect a mother, oh. any surprise that when they grow up, they're going to be disrespectful as well. So, you know, it's just about starting off those those values very very early really? okay. what's your message to um, young people who are watching now so who would like to be an actor like what to be an advice actor them to do? Um, okay if you'd like to be an actor uh, I would think about it very seriously if you'd like to be then just mm -hmm. join a no but seriously if you'd like to be study study acting if you want mm -hmm. and uh, you know join drama groups and drama classes but I would say don't be an actor if you would like to. If you really want to and need to, that's different. Because if you'd like to be an actor, after about three years, you're going to get bored. Okay. And then you're going to go, well, what else am I going to do? But if you really want to, then um, you should start looking at drama schools. Okay. And um, I would join a local drama class or take your drama classes at your colleges or schools. But um, you really do need to go to a drama school, really. Because only at drama schools do you really get to have casting directors and agents. And only through agents and casting directors can you get... You can't get radio really without casting directors or agents. You can't okay. get film without them. You can't get TV. You can get stage, but that's okay. about it. And that's not really enough. So you really need representation. That okay. means you need to go to RADA or LIPA or uh, Central or okay. Bristol School or Poor School. I mean, it's a bunch of schools. You know, you just type okay. in drama school and, and um, on the internet and you'll be fine. But uh, it will involve work. Okay. It will involve work. And obviously you've got your own website, so if you'd like to give some information to young people who would like to... Yes, absolutely. You can, yes, you can uh, write to andrew.french at... Ooh, I'm not even <laughs> sure what my website number is now. It's changed several times. Or you okay. can just contact me on uh, or just Facebook. just search Andrew French. That's what yeah, I Yeah, Andrew French, and my, you'll go, go straight to my website. Yeah. And uh, I'm more than help, helpful, to, uh, willing to uh, give anybody any help with uh, classes or...
speeches because for all okay. drama schools you're going to have to do at least two speeches to get in okay. and uh, often I find really talented actors fall down at that point because they haven't put the work in they don't quite know how to do it and again I was lucky I had people around me who said okay. Andrew I know you know what you think you know what you're doing but actually you need to do this thing here okay. so uh, yes and we do something on the eye Andrew show. French Google me <laughs> we do something on the eye show we get you to do a signature so it's I'm on the eye on, on the Irish show, my name is Oh, okay. Bloody Blonde. Yeah, okay. So oh, 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 I, I, oh, I love it. So do a signature. I love doing this. Oh, that's great. Okay. <laughs> Look, excited. No, 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 because you know, I always love those things. And your friend is excited on the Irish show. Oh, what is it? Well, let's get you to do okay, that. Okay, I swear. Um, okay. um, um, so it's the Irish show. Yeah, uh, it's the Irish show, and I'm Andrew French. Oh, that's great. Right, thank you so much, Andrew French, for coming. Thank it's been you. absolutely wonderful talking to you. Wonderful meeting and chatting you. with you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank All right. you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>